Um, so I was in Edinburgh for probably about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I came in here numerous times asking for help, uh -huh. for food, for water. Um, I really just wanted an explanation. I don't live here anymore, but I've come back for medical appointments. I was sworn at. The gentleman who works here, who is in his mid-twenties, would laughingly deny me water. Um, I was sent all over the place laughing at me because I was homeless. I actually had one lady sat where you are, barking at me for when I needed my benefit. Why don't you do your benefit yourself? And it was about five or six times I came in here, and it was, you can't use their phones, you're not getting food, you're not getting water, get out. And I just thought, as an advice shop, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Right, we deal with welfare benefits. Right. Until we, until but what I'm them. saying is, is when I came in here for the issues with my benefit, because they weren't... Were, that's right. So basically, I had... Um, Scottish government refused to pay me anything. Ironically, it was the UK government that started helping me out. I was sleeping outside in Murrayfield, because the whole reason I was here, I got hit by a bus, and I was in a horrific medical condition. Nine times out of ten, the benefit wouldn't pay me, wouldn't give me a reason. Job centre would kick me out. Just get out. So I'd end up having to come here. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is, I can't remember what the gentleman's name is, but he's a little bigger and like probably mid 20s. Mm -hmm. There was about five or six times I came in here in a desperate situation. I got no money. Did not pay my benefit. I'm on the street, and he would laugh at me and say, "You can't use our phones. Go use your own phone." And I would say, "I don't have credit on my phone. It's impossible for me to call." And it would be this end booth here. Yeah. And I just think. If someone is in such a desperate situation, even to ask for a glass of water and be oh, laughed yeah, at... Yeah, I understand that. Can I just ask you, have a wee seat? Yeah. Just, just let me know what... Come here. Just here. I just want to know what, what your situation is and see what we can do. And no, it's, you know what it is? It's, yeah. it's, I, I had to get out of Edinburgh because I had so many death threats. People were spitting in my face. People realized I was in a desperate situation. Mm -hmm. As an example, my left eye is the one that got damaged. People would purposely try and spit in my eye. I had people urinating on me. It was the city of Edinburgh. I never want to come back here. All I'm saying is, as an Edinburgh City Council advice shop, why would I be treated like that? I was coming here for help. But do you know the gentleman I'm talking about? There's quite a few of us here that come to the But is there any excuse for not even giving me a glass of water? I, well, it's not, it's not funny. I mean, I, w I was literally outside for three weeks fighting for my life. And I would come in here basically oh, saying... Oh, well, you didn't. I mean, what I did was I actually made a complaint to the manager of the, the office stating exactly what was going on here. So the sole purpose of this place, to let me get it right, is if you have a problem with your benefit, you come in here and use the phone. Well, not necessarily, because I tell you guys, there's a lot of people that just come in and protect you. I suppose if it's a really urgent, we, we have a drop-in, we have a drop-in right. every single day, which is this morning. Right, but if I came in for the drop-in, mm -hmm. and let's say the benefit didn't pay me, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's but, but this guy refused to let me use the phone and said, go use the phone yourself. So the little bit of money I had, I then had to go put credit on my phone. And run. So if, I'm just trying to understand, if that is the sole purpose of this place, why would he deny me that? No, but what, what I'm saying was my sin. I'm not, I'm not talking about other people. He knew my situation. He knew who I was. What I'm saying is benefit week after week after week would come up with an excuse or just not put the money in my account. So I came in here and I said, look, I'm waiting for my compensation to come through from a, a road accident, right? I'm sleeping outside Murrayfield. The people there were stealing my stuff. I came in here, I said, I don't have any money for food, clothes, water, nothing. I need to call the benefit because the job center down on Princess Street is refusing to talk to me. He would then say, well, you can't use our phone, put credit on your phone and call yourself. And I said, I'm desperate here. I'm, and at that point, because I'm getting so stressed, I'm like, do you mind if I have a glass of water? Well, go get a glass of water yourself. And to the point, I put in a written complaint. But it happened more than once. We were talking... Barry Fraser. I'm not in Edinburgh anymore. It's, it's not really relevant to tell me that. I'm just only here for a week to do medical appointments. And I just could not understand 
why an advice center run by Edinburgh City Council would act like that. And I'll be honest with you, there was another guy who sat in the chair opposite, asked for a glass of water, and he was refused. I'm like, it's water. So this was not like a one-off thing. Yeah, we used to have water tanks, but we thought you wouldn't Yeah, I understand. I don't need the somatics of it. What I'm saying is I came in here five, six, seven times in desperate situations. The only things you guys are really are here to do are give advice, and I was told to get out. Go get your own water. Make your own phone call. Figure it out yourself. And, and the one time he actually did write an address, he threw the letter at me and gave me the wrong address. This went, but you're surprised, but it went on for six months. Well, not the manager of this place, but the manager of that place. I put in a... So who's the manager of this place? Is he here today? I wouldn't mind having a conversation with him, because I'll be honest with you. Fraser, this, guy, this guy's actions, and it was one lady's actions, who... I'll be honest, no, 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 it wasn't, but I mean, it got that bad. There was one lady sat here with blonde hair, and I told her about my medical condition, and she went, well, at least you've not got cancer. I'm like, you're making a comment like that? Are you outraged? I mean, it was, it was horrendous, horrendous. Barry. I don't, I really just want answers, and I want to leave. It doesn't really matter. So I'm standing up because my back's a bit of a problem. Okay. So yeah. I, I understand you not happy with the way in which you were treated when you came in the shop. So I'm not I'm not originally from Edinburgh. Yeah. I came to Edinburgh in very difficult circumstances. Yeah. Normally I'm an IT manager, I tried to get my job back, I got hit by a bus on Nicholson Street, big legal case. Yeah. So I was very sick, couldn't get the hospital to treat me, disaster with the GPs. So what happened was and the reason I came here was is um, I was on benefit obviously, right? Um, now the benefit for whatever reason, one week they would pay, one week they wouldn't pay, one week they would pay, and I was literally living by pound to pound. Yeah. I mean, it was that desperate, right? Sometimes I was get and they weren't helping me at all. The, the housing, it was just like get out your issue. So I'm sleeping outside Murrayfield. Citizens stealing my clothes. It was a mess. The reason I came in here, and I'm only here until tomorrow, is. There was a gentleman, I don't know whether he works here or not, he was in his mid-twenties, kind of portly, and I would come in, and he knew who exactly who I was, because I came in here regularly. I'm like, I don't have food, I don't have water, the benefits of caught me again, can I use your phone? He's like, well, why don't you use your own phone? I said, I don't have any money. Well, that's not my problem. I said, but this is the advice shop. You guys are supposed to, he's like, go put credit on your phone and call him yourself. So he's like, Mr. Fraser, I'm not getting another argument with you, blah, blah. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't need an argument, I just need your help. So this happened about two or three times, yeah. to the point, as you can imagine, I'm getting stressed. I so literally said- Two or three times on the same day? And no, 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 this, this went all over 2015. Right. So what I'm saying is, it got to the point of I came in, and it was the same gentleman was all, almost always on the desk. And I said, look, I'm, I'm dead thirsty, I'm stressed out my mind, can I at least have a glass of water? Why don't you go get a glass of water yourself? And, I'm, and I, I thought, is he purposely going after me, or what have I done to him? Yeah. There was another gentleman who was sat to the left of me, who I never met before, said, I wouldn't mind a glass of water as well. He denied him a glass of water. The one thing is, and the reason I actually stopped coming here was, was there was an absolutely outrageous comment made, not by him. So, because of the accident, and I was bleeding, and my medical records were all over the place, disaster in this city. There was a lady sat on the, the far end here, and I said, look, I am not very well. I am struggling badly. I need, if that benefit doesn't go in every week, I'm in a serious medical problem. I said, they're dealing with blood samples right now, etc., etc." To cut a long story short, do you know what she said? This was her problem. It's like, well, don't come back in the advice center again, and at least you don't have cancer. I'm like, at least I don't have cancer? Are you, are you, who makes a comment like that? I still remember her. Middle-aged lady, Scottish lady, blonde hair, ponytail. I, I stood there like, 
You guys can clearly see I'm in a desperate situation and you're making a comment like that? When was that comment made? We're talking around, um, um, so let me just think about this now. Um, end of last summer, going into to autumn. Because I'd come in, I was in here almost on a weekly basis. Right. Weekly, bi-weekly basis, like, because the thing is, I would go to the job center on Princess Street. Yeah. They're like, not our problem, you phone. I said, you guys are not getting it. I have, the only money I get is to help me eat until this compensation comes through. So when they don't pay me, I mean, I am in a desperate situation. So I was in here all the time to the point, as soon as I would walk through the door, Mr. Fraser, you know, you're not welcome here. You can't use our phones. I'm like, you guys are supposed to help. That's one thing. But to make a comment about cancer, I'm like, you've got to be. And I almost had a full blown argument with her in this reception. I'm like, how, how on earth? Why would you make a comment like that? I don't know you. I mean, that's yeah, horrendous. It, it, it sounds, from the way you're describing it, it sounds an outrageous thing to, to say, and I, I, I wouldn't. It was basically because I, I, I had I had missing blood samples that went from Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm feeling very sick. They have told me I might be sick from the accident, and blah blah blah. And then she made, what? What you make it such a big deal? At least you don't have cancer. And I'll be honest with you, when she said it, my jaw hit the floor. Yeah. I'm like, you can clearly see I'm physically struggling. I was a disaster, and I'm like. And you're making a comment like that? It's one thing to deny me water. One thing to not let me use the phone, which is specifically what this is for. If you have a problem with your benefit, let's try and figure it out. But to go to the extreme of making a comment like that, you've got to be kidding me. I, was, I, I, I left here because I have a concussion. And obviously, if you get stressed, it makes it worse, right? I was coming out of this place literally every time with steam coming out my ears. And then to make... I came in and dealt with this guy numerous times, and Edinburgh is a small place. I've seen him walking around, and he would automatically put his head to the ground. That's an indication to me he knew he wasn't acting properly. But for her to take it to that level, yeah, no, I'm no, like, no. that's outrageous. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, I, I cannot, yeah. that sounds a completely unacceptable thing for anyone here to say, for anyone, anywhere to decide. Um, there's two things going through my mind. One is, in terms of a complaint about that aspect of staff's mm. behaviour, mm. where do you wish to take it? Mm -hmm. and the, the other thing is, right here and now, mm -hmm. is there any help that you need? Well, the thing is, my situation, I'll be perfectly honest with you, is I went from a high-level exec in Canada. I got caught in floods, broke my ankle, came back here. I was literally trying to get an IT job in Edinburgh. Within one week of getting here, I got hit by a bus. Yeah. In the head, badly, really badly. Yeah. So, I mean, I was struggling. The one thing I couldn't believe is once citizens of Edinburgh realized I was potentially in a vulnerable position, I got spat at, urinated on, they stole my clothes outside Murrayfield. So, as soon as people heard my story, they're like, get the hell out. I really don't want to come back to the city because my treatment was bordering on barbaric. Mm -hmm. The one thing is, it's citizens I didn't even know in the city were coming out, rolling down the window and shouting things at me. So I'm like, okay, if I come to an advice center run by Edinburgh City Council, the last thing, I'm looking for a little bit of peace, yeah. a little bit of help, not to have comments made like that. One, the, the, the guy, I mean, I don't know if you know him, he's in his mid to late 20s, quite, he was here almost every single day yeah. and refused water. He knew I was in a difficult situation with my benefit because they were messing me around a lot. He then said, you know what, we've helped you once or twice, it's now up to you. I said, but this is an advice job. It's a drop-in. Point actually physically took the phone away from me. Went, you're not using it. Yeah. Then what he did was, um, th there's a, a form. I think it's in Sheffield. I can't. Where's the headquarters for? Well, it's Newcastle upon Tyne or something. You, if, if you don't get it, you can. Uh, it was a medical certificate. That's what it was. Right, right. And they were saying they didn't have it, so I had to send it again. Yeah. He gave me the wrong address, so I posted it. I still didn't get my benefit. I came back and said, look, please. Can I please use the phone? Can we verify my money is going into my account? Do it yourself. So what I did was I waited purposely until this guy wasn't here because he point blank wasn't helping me. That's when I then met the, I would say mid 40s, blonde ponytail. And she was sat in the corner and I explained the situation and she's like, well, you know, we've done everything we can. I said, well, I don't think you have. I'm asking to use the phone to get the money in my account. 
And then I start because she wasn't doing anything, I started to mention personal information that I got hit by a bus, yeah. blood, blah, blah, blah. And then she made the cancer comment. And I'm like, I literally was almost staggered by it. I'm, I'm like, what have I done to you? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we access to the phone is, it's always a bit of a difficult thing here because we're really trying to use the phone access just for real urgent matters and priorities. Now, how can you get much urgent? And I, I was well, living on the street. Yeah, if, if, if it's about a missing benefit payment and you have no resource to any other funds, then you know, circumstances should be that, that you can... I think that's pretty urgent. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 with regard to water, we sometimes have... The, the water supply here is a bit on and off. We don't always have available water. So sometimes if there's one person on the desk, to go away and get some water takes them away from the desk and we can't do that. So sometimes we... We say no. We do advise people to go next door because there is water available next door usually. So if there was more than one person, we should have made an effort to get someone across. But it's just, you know what, there's, there's, there's no. ways and means about going about something. Yeah. But to be point blank rude and get it yourself. You're not using the phone. Get out. Yeah. I'm like, is this an advice? It was almost like it became a little personal. Yeah. And then I actually waited two days without eating just so I didn't have to talk to this guy. Mm -hmm. Thought, okay, I'll talk to another lady. And she made a comment. I mean, that she made that comment, and I'm like, I'm in a fi literally a fight for my life, and you're talking about cancer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's pretty it's, sick. It's it's completely unacceptable of any member of staff here that uh, said that. You know, and I, I, so I can only apologise for anything that I said. Um, you sound a bit woman with blonde hair and a ponytail. It was dirty you know, blonde, mid forties, um, sat in that yeah. chair right below the camera. Um, and she just, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I, the only reason I'm even coming in here is because I had to come back for a couple of medical appointments yeah. for this, and it's coming to a close. Yeah. But I'm literally, I came in here and I'm like, they can't get away with what they did. I mean, it put me, the stress it put me through was unbelievable. And that, that, that concept, I never came back. Yeah. I'm like, if you're willing to make comments like that, I'm not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm... I'm can understand you thinking like that. I'm, I'm trying to think who it possibly could have been, and it's the guy. There was no one that looks like him. He was yeah. in uh, mid to late twenties, portly Scottish guy. They were both Scottish. Yeah. The other one was a. Uh, did, did he have facial hair? No, no, always clean shaven. Right. right. And I actually saw him around Edinburgh quite a few times. This was almost from the whole of 2015 all the way up to September time. Yeah. And they were drilling me. I mean, it's one thing to not do something, but they were being nasty. Yeah. And I just thought that the, the woman was probably, I'd say, mid-40s, blonde, dirty hair, average build, maybe about five, six, five, seven. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever had a comment like that made to me in my life. Yeah. Never mind when I'm in a medically difficult situation. Yeah. It was obvious from looking at me, I was struggling. To make a comment, I'll be honest, it hurt pretty bad. I'm like, I don't know you, I'm coming here for help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, we, so anyone coming through the door here is coming for help and assistance. We know that, and, and we should be dealing with people. In it it got borderline aggressive to, to the point I literally walked out. And, okay. and I was willing to come in and deal with this guy a little bit because I couldn't figure out if he was just had a, an issue with me or he was just, but for her to take it to that level, I never came back. I'm like, if you're really willing to say something to me like that, when I'm, regardless of whether I'm struggling or not, someone said that to you, you're going to take offense. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. a nice thing to say. No, no, it isn't at all. So I, I can only apologize for that. I'm, I'm trying to think who it may have been. The only person who might meet that description is someone who actually works in the back office and works away from him. I think it might so be her. That rings a bell, to be honest, because she says I'm not known. It might be her. That rings a bell with yeah, me. Yeah, because so she's someone who, who, it would be very rare for her to be on the front desk. That rings a bell with me, because yeah. she was the only one on the front desk, and it yeah. rings a bell. She said, I'm not normally on the front desk. Yeah. I mean, if you put her in front of me, I'd probably recognize. I don't really want to line someone up, but what I would say is it was right below that camera. Yeah. And to make... I mean, I don't know how long you could see whether we even get to that point, but I swear on my life, she made that comment. Okay. The, 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 there's no sound recording here, right. so 
But even if you register, I don't know if you guys keep records or anything. This went on. If I tied up the amount of times Benefit didn't pay me for the amount of times I came in here, it would be pretty clear. All I'm saying, I mean, how would I even go about a complaint? Because I don't think they should get away with what they did. Well, so the, the way we deal with complaints is there's a few ways we can do it. Either you can speak to me as we're doing now, and then I can make investigations to try and find out, and then I can come back to you. But I'm not, I, I'm not coming back to Edinburgh. Right. Well, that, that, there's that informal resolution, or there's a, a form that can be filled in that kind of makes it more formal that I then have to complete a report within a certain time scale on a more formal it, basis. Is it possible, the, considering my situation, and I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons I got out of Edinburgh was my situation escalated to death threats because they thought I was homeless. I mean, it got nasty in Edinburgh. Um, the one thing is, can we correspond by email or is that not possible? Yeah, yeah, it's a certain, certainly is, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, can, I can give you my email yeah. and if you... Uh, um, I'll get a piece of paper and yeah. I'll write both things down.